Hello, this is Canonical, the podcast that takes literature out of the classroom. I'm James Shaw, and with me, as always, are my co-hosts, Ia Darris and Sam Spieler. Hey. Hello. Good evening, good evening. This week, we are reviewing the second book in our series on rich country, poor country, Viet Chan Nguyen's The Sympathizer. We started with Yun Ko Un's The Disaster Tourist, and we'll conclude with Paradise by Abdul Razak Gurna. If you would like to chat with us, you can find us on social media at CanonicalPod and on Reddit at our Canonical Pod. Sam, The Sympathizer was your pick for this series. Why did you pick this book? I heard about this book a couple of years ago, and it was kind of on the back burner for me for a long time. And the more I read about it, or the more I heard about it, the better it sounded. So I've been trying to work it into a series for a while. And it felt right for this one. So I wanted to get us to start reading it for this series. It was on a lot of best of the decade lists, I remember. And a lot of the best of the century lists, even though that's kind of that's presumptuous. early. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm always willing to give a Pulitzer winner a shot, uh, even though we've uh, read some Pulitzer winners recently that uh, I don't know if they were up to snuff looking at you, Goldfinch. But um, I mean, that wasn't the only thing this won. And uh, it, it just sounded like a fantastic book. We'll get into it, but I was very happy. It feeds into your fetish for Vietnam. <laughs> oh, yeah. So. Not the people, the country. Right. Just as a whole. So the author of the book, Nguyen, like the main character in the book, he and his family fled Vietnam at the conclusion of the Vietnam War, and they eventually settled in San Jose, where he spent the majority of his childhood. He went on to study at UC Berkeley, where he received a BA and PhD in English. And after graduation, he joined USC as a professor in cultural studies and English. The Sympathizer, this book, was his debut novel. And as Sam said, uh, when it was published in 2015, it won a whole bunch of awards, including the Pulitzer. And then uh, six years after that, he decided to write the sequel to this novel, The Committed, that was published last year in 2021. The Committed wasn't on my radar at all, even though we were doing this book club. I remember we were looking for books all through that year, and I, I didn't even didn't even think about that book. Yeah, I feel like I saw that name somewhere and did not associate it with this book at all. Yeah, it has not been on my radar either. So The Sympathizer is structured as, I guess, an epistolary of sorts. An epistolary is usually a letter. This is kind of a letter because the narrator, who is a half Vietnamese, half French army captain and undercover communist agent, he is writing a testimony to the person holding him prisoner. And at the beginning of the novel, we don't know where he's being held prisoner and we don't know who's holding him prisoner. In the confession, the narrator describes his role during the fall of Saigon during the Vietnam War and his subsequent escape and exile in the U.S. Then he describes his job as a consultant on a Vietnam War movie and then his return to Vietnam as a guerrilla fighter. The protagonist is unnamed in this book, and there are a number of main characters who pull him in different directions, Bon and Man, his two sworn brothers, one is a strident anti-communist, that's Bon, and the other is the narrator's communist handler, that's Man. Another character who is important to the novel is the general, to whom the narrator serves as an aide-de-camp, and his mother, who died some time ago before the novel begins. And there are also two love interests in America who are important, not as important as the previous characters, but are also important in the America sections of the book. So the novel is quite long, around 400 pages, but the plot, though winding at times, I did not think it was especially complicated because the protagonist is often compelled in his role as communist secret agent and army captain to perform actions that test his loyalty and morality. And it's quite clear to the reader, I think, throughout the novel why he needs to do what he needs to do. And so the plot is actually quite clear in that way. Like, I don't think you're ever confused about why the protagonist is in a certain place or performing a certain action. A lot of this is also because the narrator will tell you very bluntly why he's doing something. 
While I think the plot is interesting and even gripping at times, especially at the beginning, I thought it was quite compelling at the beginning, the novel really asks to be evaluated on its ideas. The narrator will at times lecture you, which to me reveal the author's academic training, but this didactic tone is offset often by the dark humor of the novel. So how well do you think this book, The Sympathizer, works as a novel of ideas? I think he gives a fair argument for his ideas when he doesn't necessarily need to. In the interviews, it sounds like he really wanted to go against the Western grain, so to speak, particularly in its view of Vietnam and the war. But the way he sets up the duality of this character and the circumstances that he's in, I think he gives this balance that feels more fair than he maybe even needs to. So Sam, for you, the idea of the novel of ideas is the political aspect of the novel. Is that what you mean? Or is it the duality or is it both? I think it's both. It deals with the politics, obviously, but I think the duality is maybe more important than the politics. Here, I would maybe say that it's not a novel of ideas, but rather that Nguyen is a novelist with a very strong point of view. And I think there is a difference. And I think the difference that I see is that he's offering us a point of view which is distinct. We haven't seen a Vietnamese-American account of the war, really, in popular fiction. And that's a very interesting perspective. But I don't think what he's saying about for example, the differences between communism and Western democracy are particularly new or novel or very explored, but the perspective and the the confidence with which that perspective is shared with the reader is what I find interesting. So I think a lot of reviewers agree with you, Ed, in that they describe the significance of this novel as being one of the few novels about the Vietnam War from the point of view of the Vietnamese. And also, of course, a big chunk of the novel deals with the immigrant experience of the Vietnamese in America. How significant is this achievement to you? What do you think this perspective gives us that the previous perspectives on the Vietnam War did not give us? I think he lays out pretty clearly in the book how significant this is. I mean, he talks about how Hollywood is this propaganda machine. And even if you get different perspectives on, you know, the success or failures of that war, it's still from one side. It's still a very American portrayal, uh, regardless of what's being portrayed. So here we're getting something very different from that, very different from what has become an almost, I don't want to say universal, I'll say worldwide point of view that Hollywood has kind of forced on us. So instead, he's giving this view that we don't typically see, at least in Western media. I think it matters much more to me that Nguyen is an academic, and he's intelligent, and he's thoughtful, than that he is Vietnamese American. I don't think a point of view is a genetic thing. You can't inherit it by where your ancestors are from. And I think it matters a lot more that he is well-read and he's conversant in the issues that he's exploring in this novel. I don't think the fact that he is Vietnamese gives him much more than the the impetus to explore these ideas. I think a well-meaning author of any other heritage could do the same, but they wouldn't be prompted to. Hmm. That is the question that I'm struggling with, because I think his academic training is, for me, the most interesting part of the book. Because the way he tells his story, it is very considered. And at times, he just goes on an academic rant about a certain topic. And that's what I really enjoyed about the book. And so the question that I ended up facing is, because so many reviewers kept on talking about how it's important that this was from a Vietnamese point of view. I mean, part of that is low-hanging fruit, because a lot of reviewers, you know, they have to talk about, as we discussed in our review of The Disaster Tourist, you know, reviewers have to sell the book in a way, right? They have to tell you, the casual reader, why this book is important, and 
the low hanging fruit here is, well, this book is important because it's about the Vietnam War and it's from a Vietnamese point of view. Like that's very accessible when you're trying to sell the book. But what I find myself questioning is, well, how important is that perspective, the Vietnamese perspective? Because like you, Ed, when I was reading the book, the academic perspective is what I thought was really interesting. The Vietnamese perspective, I think it was interesting in that you get certain details that you will not get from a white academic who would be writing this book. Like, for example, the experience of growing up in Vietnam or what it felt like to be an immigrant in the U.S. But I find myself really just asking myself, well, how much do I care about that as someone who read a lot of immigrant fiction? You know, like how important is this aspect of the book? Well, I I suppose if it were poorly written, then it wouldn't matter. But I think putting the Vietnamese perspective together with what you're saying, the well-considered, the academic, that's what makes this book work. That's what's, well, that's what makes this book what these reviewers are saying about it. I think there's a difference between what matters in a book and what matters in the conversation. If we are having this kind of public intellectual conversation about what this war means, and we don't have Vietnamese voices speaking, we have a profound gap in our knowledge of what really happened. But that's a separate issue from the book. The book itself doesn't succeed because Nguyen is Vietnamese. It adds something to the book, but I don't think that addition is central because, like you said, James, the immigrant experience coming from Vietnam to America is similar in some respects, in many valuable respects, to the immigrant experience of coming from other countries to America. So if you've read other immigrant fiction, you are going to get similar content. I think we're in a phase of our culture now where we really care about representation. And of course, you've seen this in like all media, right? And a lot of people on the other side complain about too much representation. And I think the problem with that is sometimes when you say a book is important because of the point of view, you're saying it's important just because of the point of view. Mm. And for me, the reason why I call it low-hanging fruit is because I think, no, I don't think that's the only reason why it's important. The only is the problem. It should be important for other reasons as well. And I fear sometimes that, especially book reviewers, they forget this. That, you know, when you read a book like, what was that one? The Japanese one that I picked? Buddha in the Attic. Buddha in the Attic, yeah. Where... I think we all agreed that that book, the main attraction of it is its point of view, is that it's describing something, some aspect of American history that's overlooked, etc. And I like the book, but I feel like that's where the importance of the book ended. With a book that is truly great, you would hope that they would focus on things that are more important than just the Vietnamese point of view. So do you think this book is truly great? I did. I really enjoyed it, not just from a pleasure standpoint, but I enjoyed the problems that he brings up. Well, there is a pleasure standpoint, and I think that the first chapters of this novel about the fall of Saigon are very enjoyable reading, and I was really intrigued and really engaged. But I don't know if that's something I can credit Nguyen with so much because that is an event that's just so full of human emotion that it would be very difficult to fuck it up. Like, it's just so complicated and so interesting that it's hard not to make a reader interested in it. The rest of the novel, I found my interest waning only because it has a very strong point of view And that point of view is engaging, to me at least, in as much as you agree with it and you're like, yeah, I'm angry too. Or yeah, I think that's stupid too. And I agree with him on many things, but not all of the things. And in terms of just plot, there are sections of the novel later on that I feel are kind of modular, I guess is the word. They work, but they don't have to be there. 
And here I'm thinking of the long section in the middle of the novel that to me I felt was put into the novel just because it gives Nguyen a pretext for talking about Hollywood. And I'm fine with his point of view being in the novel, but for me I would prefer it to emerge kind of organically rather than being injected in a very conspicuous way. I disagree a little bit about the use of that movie and the use of Hollywood. I think we're going to talk about that a little bit in subsequent episodes. But I will say I do agree about the modularity. It did feel like, okay, now here's this part of the novel. Okay, now we're moving to this part of the novel. So I I do agree about that. It's like a stand-up comedy act where the comedian has his set and he's like, okay, I'm going to riff for five minutes on this topic and then I'm going to riff for five minutes on that topic. He knows what he can riff on and he just finds a way of connecting these pieces to each other. I agree with Sam in that I think this is a really good novel. And I think it's also interesting to read this in the series because a lot of the faults that you mentioned, Ied, were faults that I found with The Disaster Tourist, mainly being that certain parts of it you thought, oh, it's not as important as other parts. But for me, this book is just on an entirely different level in that I think there is potential for this book to be like a really great work of literature. What makes me say this is I think he's writing in a certain tradition of literature written by non-white people, like Invisible Man. That kind of novel goes on this journey where you start in one place and then you end up in another place and then things happen kind of randomly where what you get is almost like a slice of life of what it's like to be a minority at that time. I think you could argue that we understand this so well now that you don't really need this kind of book. Like when Ellison wrote Invisible Man, people didn't know what it was like to be black in the, I think, 1920s. You could argue that this need doesn't exist because people know more or less what it's like to be Vietnamese in the 60s and 70s. But this circles back to what we were talking about before, where maybe people don't. Maybe this perspective is unique enough where you need to have this kind of experience. The movie segment is the one where I happen to agree with you yet, where I think it is a step too far because it's not really replicating the Vietnamese experience. It's demonstrating how the Vietnamese people and the war are portrayed in American culture. And so it's kind of like a a detour from everything else in the book that's kind of explaining and showing the Vietnamese experience. This is much more explaining. So that part, I agree with you. I think that's a little bit of a detour. But every other part of the book, I think, is very important, even though it does feel choppy. Like, it seems like he's moving from one phase of the Vietnamese experience to the next phase, to the next phase. But I think that's the novel's strength is that he's writing in this tradition of novels from a certain point of view that shows the experience from that time. And I think what sets this apart is how he considers the idea or the the construct behind that experience. Like, what is it about society that creates this experience? And what is it like to be a person who kind of is pulled apart you know, this kind of duality that exists within the Vietnamese, but also within the Vietnamese American. I think those ideas are very much considered and explored, which is, for me, what makes this a really good novel, a work of literature. I don't want to give the impression that I dislike the novel. It's just that I think that what you're describing is true, But there are lots of sections where it's not done to the maximum effect. What we want to know is how the personal and the political intersect and how the big ideas about Vietnamese society and American society intersect with people's lived experience. And as an example, there is a scene in the middle of the novel where they go to a wedding and... In the middle of the wedding, there is this white congressman who gives a speech. 
That, to me, I thought was a very interesting speech and a very illuminating thing to read about because I don't go to many Vietnamese weddings, but it showed me part of life, especially part of Vietnamese American life in the 1970s, that was very compelling. It showed me how these political factors intersect with this very kind of domestic situation and how there are different moving parts involved and different levels of power involved. That, to me, I think is an example of where it's well done. That's part of somebody's personal life. But when we're talking about, you know, people going back to Vietnam to fight in guerrilla warfare or people traveling across the world to serve as consultants to Hollywood, that's not really lived experience. It's very imaginative, and it gives the pretext for Nguyen to kind of riff off of these topics, but it's not particularly illustrative. Well, I think quite a few of the plot points revolve around this idea that as a Vietnamese refugee who just left the war, there's this question of where do your loyalties lie and what is it you really believe in? There are quite a few tensions that arise because of this. So he just left Vietnam after this war where people were desperately pitted against each other, right? And against people in their own family. So how are you supposed to feel about this when you've been embroiled in this war for, you know, up, up to 10 years and then you leave that war behind? Like, how are you supposed to adjust back to regular life and live with people who may be on the other side of the war. I think that's a big part of the Vietnamese refugee experience in America. And I think much of the book, especially in the second half, deals with that. So his choice to return is focused on that. He returns for that reason, right? This idea that you can't leave that war behind you, that once you've come to America, you're not saved because you've left the country, because the war is still present. You're still living the war. And for me, that's why the second half of the book is important. And it's also why I think the movie is a detour, because I think it takes you away from that. What did you think about the didactic parts of the book, where it's obvious that he's just preaching at you? I didn't enjoy it. I think that's what I was saying earlier about this being a novel with a point of view rather than a novel of ideas. He has a point of view, and he wants you to know what his point of view is. And it wasn't always something new. Therefore, it wasn't always an illuminating experience. Do you think a novel of ideas can have a strong point of view like that, where it's obviously leaning in one way? I would say that for me, what I value most in an exploration of ideas is the exploration. And when you come to a conversation with very strong point of view, you have a conclusion, which kind of prohibits a lot of exploration. I'm thinking about the moviegoer, which I would say doesn't have a strong point of view, but you know where the writer stands. We all agreed it was a novel ideas, but it didn't really have a neutral attitude toward existentialism either. When you have an idea that people haven't encountered before, I think you can be more forceful. In this novel, I think that some of the things that he's talking about are clearly ridiculous. And to be forceful with those things, it feels a bit heavy-handed. Here I'm thinking of, I guess it's the dean of the Oriental Studies Department at the college, where he's lecturing him about the difference between Western and Asian people. Like, perhaps in the 1970s, that type of scene would be much more hard-hitting. But now in 2022, that type of scene is kind of clearly ridiculous. And so for him to devote so much time to it is a bit over the top. We obviously don't want to spoil the ending, but the ending takes place in a prison camp, as I mentioned before. And one of the reviews, I think it was the New York Times, pretty much gave away the whole book. <laughs> four-fifths of the review, I don't know if you guys read it, was like a summary of the book, which made me think this reviewer just really didn't want to think too hard about this book. So in the ending, some reviews, I think that one included, praised it because it talked about torture. I thought that was really powerful, that ending, but I think it gets a little bit too much praise, I guess, because of the U.S.'s stance on torture post 
if you set that aside, I think it still works very powerfully as part of the book. What did you guys think about the ending? Just from a craft point of view, I think it could have been tightened up. I think it was a little bit overlong. But in terms of the content that's there and the ideas that are there, I thought it was very interesting. What I'm most interested in in terms of the last part of the book is how it kind of dramatizes the role of the individual and individual pleasure and individual freedom as opposed to revolutionary politics and how this character can live for himself but also live for the revolution at the same time and whether or not that's possible. That idea I think is very compelling. I don't really know if I like or understand or agree with the conclusion that Nguyen has drawn from it, but I think it's very important to talk about. And I think that if you are going to talk about revolutionary politics in a book, it's something that deserves to be part of the conversation. And this will be the focus of your episode in a few weeks? Yeah, I think we'll have a lot more to say about that in that episode. How important is it that we don't know exactly who he's writing to until the end of the novel. There's a mystery aspect, and I feel like that was marketed as such, but I don't know how important that is. I will look at my Sam list of phrases. What, red herring? <laughs> it's right. a MacGuffin. Right. Yeah, it's a, it could be a MacGuffin. <laughs> yeah, it's the gun that's that showed at the beginning the of the book gun. or scene or whatever. Yeah, Chekhov's gun. Uh-huh. How important is it? I don't think it was that important. I mean, it establishes a kind of dramatic irony because, you know, whatever he experiences, he's not going to die because he has to reach the point where he's talking to the commandant. Mm. So, for example, in the scene where he works on the film, he gets injured. But, you know, it's not going to end there because he hasn't reached the commandant yet. It's a ghost. (laughs) But, yeah. You're forgetting about the disaster tourist where the same thing happens and the character dies. Spoiler (laughs) alert. I mean, this book, I don't want to say is a good book because it's better than that book, because I think that sets the standard very low. But yeah, that was a problem in that book as well. We mentioned earlier that Nguyen published The Committed, a sequel to this book. Are you interested in reading The Committed? And did you think this book needed a sequel? I'd go so far as to say that almost no book that I'm really interested in reading is written for a sequel. I think that books should be built as self-contained units. And that said, I don't think this book needs a sequel, but I would be willing to read it if only because I thought this book was that enjoyable to read, that I'm curious about the second book. Yeah, I feel the same way. I am drawn to novels for the other meaning of the word, the novel aspect. I, I'm not usually interested in continuing, you know, the storylines of any given character or group of characters, but I did really enjoy this book. So on that, I would be interested in seeing what happens in a sequel. Another thing I think is a problem is this book is very linear. And it seems to me that the sequel, The Committed, is also very linear. So it's just taking this slice of life, as James is calling it, and making it an even bigger slice. And if that's the way it's working, it seems kind of poorly considered, because then it's like, well, how big can the slice get? Why ever stop looking at his story? It seems to me that the beginning and the end points of a story are a really important place for an author to show off their decision making and their consideration. And if it can continue indefinitely, it just seems ill considered. I think for me, what would make this sequel interesting is because of how this book is constructed, you mentioned its kind of modular construction. I would say that because of that, you can almost add on modules indefinitely, right? I mean, you could just keep on looking at different aspects of the post-Vietnam War Vietnamese experience. And that makes sense to me. 
I think what this novel kind of struggles from a little bit is it's very expansive, but there are certain points like the movie where I thought it was too expansive. And I applaud it for being expansive, but I think what a sequel affords it is the ability to talk about other aspects of the Vietnamese experience in a more coherent way, because there are certain parts of this book that maybe should have been in another book. And the way this book is set up, because you have the unnamed narrator, what that means is this narrator can be anybody, right? It's, it's a stand-in for the Vietnamese person in general. And I think this, once again, is working in a certain tradition of the literary novel written from a minority, like Invisible Man. So I could see it having multiple sequels, because the character honestly isn't that important. It's the time and the problems of that time that's important. So there are more and more problems that he can talk about. And The Committed is set in France. Now that, for me, actually raises some questions, because as far as I know, Nguyen has never lived in France, and his depiction of French racial politics, and uh, I think a big part of The Committed has to do with Algerians. Like that, for me, actually, I kind of question, because I don't know if he can speak to that, even though he's also from a a former French colony, I I don't know if you can speak for the Algerian experience, you know, in a very authentic way. So generally, I'd say I agree with you yet in that most books don't need sequels, but I think this book is uniquely structured in a way that would allow for multiple books related to it. Well, I think because it moves forward in time a certain amount, it allows for other political questions. And you just brought up Algiers. Obviously, it will have to see whether it's handled well, but I think allowing it to be more expansive with other political issues as time has moved forward might be interesting to see. I mean, the funny thing about him writing a book set in France is so much of the importance of this book, as we talked about, deals with representation. Like, there aren't a lot of books from his point of view. But now he's writing a book about a Vietnamese person in France. You know, so he's, I mean, shouldn't there be like a Vietnamese writer in France who's writing this book? Um, It kind of seems like, oh, that's an odd choice to make to set in France. All right. So it sounds like we have a lot to talk about in the next couple of weeks. We'll stop here. You can find us at Canonical Pod on social media or on Reddit. If you enjoyed this podcast, you can give us a nice review on Apple or your podcast platform of choice. Next week, we'll be back with another episode where we discuss this novel in depth. If you're interested in joining that discussion, go ahead and find a copy of this book. It's quite long, and we will be, I think, spoiling the book. So if you care about that, you'd want to read it first. Till next time, happy reading. We'll talk to you soon.